Hey everybody, Chris Adamo here from balloonpro.co. Um, I've had this question asked many times, what if you have a, an image? Um, in this case, I've got a, a client who is uh, GWS Giants. And um, uh, if we go here, they've got a logo, which is like this. Um, so I've got an image that we want to um, upload to balloonpro.co and um, to the design tools and then overlay that with our balloon design. So I'm going to quickly show you how. Now, under design templates, you'll see here, test out the very latest balloon features in beta tools. So beta is the, um, uh, like another word for software that we're working on. We want to launch it and get some testing done. There's a few little issues. So we've got the original software here, of course, but you can click on the beta tools to, um, upload uh, to, to open some of the new features. So the main feature here is um, add background image, which I've had many people ask about. So simply I will do that. I've got my logo saved and um, you can see it's here. It's quite large, of course. Now, one of the other features is you can hold down the control key and move your mouse um, scroll wheel up or down. So it doesn't actually move the, um, the, the window like it used to, it just moves. If your mouse is over to the grid, it'll just zoom in and out of that grid, which is really helpful. You can see that the, um, the, the logo is, is too big, so I can add more rows to, to be able to see that whole logo. But you can also click this adjust background button there, and you can move it around, as you can see. Now, if I hold down shift, I can actually resize that logo, bigger or smaller, and then move it around. So the, the real advantage of this is not only can you have a, a background image where you can create um, a column or an arch or something in situ in a storefront, but you can also use this for designing logos. Um, Duplet Square Pack works really well um, for logo design, but uh, bear in mind there's this rotate 90 degrees um, checkbox. So if I click on that, you'll see that the um, the actual hexagons or, or, or the, of the circles, the um, the grid changes its pattern slightly, and, and I'll explain it this way. If I were to be looking for a V, uh, I'm going to create it like this, just say, and my, my point is, is here, that's my V, okay? Um, now, if I wanted a sharper point, I click rotate, and the whole, pe the whole piece rotates 90 degrees, you can see how now that gives me a sharper point facing down because that sharp point was always there. It was just facing this way, not, not directly down. So it depends on what you're designing as to if you, uh, um, you want to rotate it or not. So in this case, um, I do want to rotate it because you can see the, uh, if we, we go to adjust background, this particular line down here works better uh, in, in this rotation versus trying to find the line, it sort of goes over a few balloons. So I hope that makes sense. Let's keep it rotated and I might make it just a little bit bigger. The, so the advantage here is I can make it smaller to fit within you know, four or five lines or bigger, depending on what the client wants and their budget. So this seems to work quite well. I'm gonna add my standard orange, remove the adjust background and just start filling it in. So maybe not that one, we'll start over here. and work our way down and up. So it just makes the whole process a lot easier with designing logos. Now this curve is complicated. The, the, the more pixels you have, i.e. the bigger it is, the, um, the better a curve will look, but you can just sort of play around with that. I find the clients um, are just mesmerized but that a logo can be created out of balloons that they're gonna be pretty understanding with something like a, a little bit of a jagged curve. Um, all right, so let's, remove the background image and just, I like to just put it next to it like so and we can click the, the tidy up button there you go we'll move them back this way and um, now saving it so I like to remove the guides and um, you can, you can file save as JPEG, GIF, and all the rest of it. Now, that they're great files for sending to your client, but I will always actually save the file, all right? So this is the working file. It's called a .json file, and um, make sure you sa always save that one so that you can then load it later and then perhaps um, 
you know, just say they want to see what it looks like in green. Well, there you go. You can quickly do that with two seconds and then save it again. So look, I hope that demonstration's helped. Um, any other questions, always jump on balloonpro.co, Chris Adamo, the Facebook page, or hit me up with any direct questions. Have a good day. Bye.